Hi everyone, it's April and this time of the year is generally characterized by a lot of rain bringing in the promise of flowers in May. So I thought of doing some painting something that is uh, reminiscent of the rain and reminiscent of my childhood memories of paper boats. Let's get started with this watercolor tutorial. I'm starting off by wetting the entire surface of the paper uh, with water, just plain water, but I am not wetting the areas where I have placed my paper boats. So the paper, uh, I'm going very carefully around the paper boats. Then I start dropping some color um, and I'm using a shade of blue here. The fuchsia works very good here and I'm adding a little bit of viridian to it and you can see that I'm just dropping the colors side by side and allowing the water in the paper that is already absorbed in the watercolor paper to actually do the blending. I'm not actually using my brushes or brush strokes too much to create the blending. And then I'm using a little bit of a darker blue while which I'm making by adding a little bit of a Prussian blue or cobalt blue to the fuchsia and uh, making darkening it a little bit and uh, then I'm keeping on adding this color all around the paper in different areas and I'm going to create kind of like color columns here just like uh, reflections of uh, to mimic the reflection of uh, anything in the surrounding and thus there would be some lighter columns and some darker columns which would make more sense as I proceed along with the painting so and underneath the boat there would be some darker shadows so you can see that I'm putting a little bit of darker colors underneath the boat and the paper is still thoroughly wet and that is kind of what you want at this point because you want those colors to blend all by themselves and you do not have to do a lot of work and this is why it is important that you use a very good quality watercolor paper whether it is cold press or hot press it does not matter i'm using a hot press paper over here and by the way all the supplies are linked be below in the video description so you can check them out and find out whatever supplies i have used in this painting now I have let the paint kind of uh, dry. It's not 100% dry, but pretty much dry. And then I am kind of starting to create this circular ripple like things that you see when the raindrops hit the ground. So um, you can see that I started with a small circle and then I'm slowly making bigger circles. And I'm fair, using a fairly lighter shade of blue here because I will slowly build up on the color and add more dark, uh, darker shades of blue. Like uh, you can see I'm doing right now. I'm slowly adding the darker shades while the paint is still wet. So that again, once again, it automatically blends one color into the other and you do not have to do a lot of work blending because it is watercolor. And one of the nature of watercolor is that if you, you press the brush or use a brush too much, you will see the brush strokes. And not necessarily, I want to see all the brush strokes over here because I want to create these circular puddles and the thing about these puddles is that you have to create them one by one one over here one over there and slowly build them up which works over here because that allows you to work in smaller areas and it, that also is beneficial to us because in case of watercolors working in smaller areas actually works in our advantage so i'm slowly building up on the shadow underneath the boat adding a lot of darker colors there but still keeping them fairly light not going to my great darks yet so now I'm moving on to another section. Like I said, in this painting, you I will build on section by section at a time, and that is actually beneficial to create very realistic kind of look with watercolors. 
building on the ripple again now at this point i want some of the brush strokes to show so some of the darker colors that i'm now putting with my round brush and i'm using a fairly big brush you could see that which in case of watercolor is fine because uh, because of the water and the paint the brushes hold a very fine tip even if you're using a big brush still it will give you fine details if you want to really paint fine details at this point and i'm creating some of the ripple like marks in the water this is where i start creating the columns of color so i i earlier mentioned and it probably did not make any sense at that point of time so you can see that at it, the painting is divided into two sections some of the section has lighter colors and the adjacent surrounding section has darker colors so there are sections of lighter colors and darker colors kind of reflecting what is in the surrounding areas maybe there are some tall trees and the trunks are making the darker shadows and in between the trees the space is making the lighter air colored areas okay now working on my second ripple here i'm doing the exact same thing as i did on the first ripple but here i started working from outside inwards which is also fine so i made the circular structures and while the paint was still wet with the very light layers i added some of the darker colors and slowly building up on the lights and darks similarly i will be doing a lot of ripples in different areas of the painting kind of showing that the raindrops are hitting in different parts of the water on the ground this painting actually while i was doing it was making me very happy and i was also thinking i don't know if kids these days actually um you know when they uh, have the rain they go out and sail paper boats because that was a very important part of our childhood we would wait for rainy days and if 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 it's a time where when you are at home and not at school or anything and uh, if you have finished all your homework and all you, know, you you can get scrap paper or old newspapers and get some paper and fold them up and make paper boats and sail them uh, in the process i also taught my son to make a paper boat well these are not actually parts of the tutorial but it, it's a part of the experience and part of the reason why i painted the whole thing april showers are uh, are so memorable just because of this special paper boat memories and i hope it brings about some memories for you and if not you can start creating your own memories by making paper boats it's never never you are never too old to make a paper boat moving on to a different section you can see that i'm still making some ripples some of the ripples i'm kind of making like a half ripple so that it does not um, look like all if uh, very looks very natural like ripples are and also building on the columns of color and light and dark and around the co darker columns of color i'm also building some lighter um, like i'm trying to smudge the edges a little bit i don't want all the harsh line to show i want some of them to show to kind of generate the look of ripples and there you go the second column of color i'm actually looking into a couple of reference photos which is also helpful when you're trying to paint things realistically and it's not very difficult to find you know um reference photos for this you just have to google paper boats or uh, uh you know rain or uh, rain ripples or water ripples or something like that and and uh, you are not getting into a copyright issues using those uh those pictures or photographs because you're not actually using one single photograph like this painting i used uh, three different photographs couple of them had paper boats and cup one was just uh, to mimic the water ripples and you know rain hitting on the ground that kind of uh, image so one paper boat first from one photograph the other paper boat first from the other uh, photograph and the water and the ripples kind of i did a mix and match from all the three photographs 
so no way i'm getting into copyright issues i'm not kind of uh, stealing or doing anything just creating good art so yes go ahead and use a reference photo if you have never painted ripples or paper boats or you know water rain water on the ground ever before that would be very helpful to kind of get the idea of how it should look like and later once you get uh, kind of comfortable you can take away the references and uh, let your heart take you um, where it leads on to onto the paper boat you can see that i'm using a lot of different colors although technically the paper boat is probably white um, or you know very light shade of the paper but the reason i'm using a lot of colors is that white is never ever white the the nature of the color white is to reflect whatever color it sees in the surroundings so if, if there is a purple and blues in the surroundings i will put those in my paper boat in the shadow areas and uh, kind of mix and match the lights and darks and give a realistic look that's why you can see so many different colors and although i'm adding a lot of different colors you know watercolor dries a lot lighter than you paint on so once the paper is uh, uh, dry then all these colors will fade to a very li much lighter shade onto the second boat now this is going to be like a um you know pink colored uh, boat and earlier i remember i said that the color of blue i used was fuchsia but fuchsia is kind of like a magenta shade so it, it is not fuchsia it's kind of like a cerulean blue that i was using and i'm really sorry for saying that before not i kind of mixed up all the colors i guess uh, happens some days when you do not use the right words or in this case the right colors the next board being pink i'm kind of um, varying the shades of pink by adding darker tones and lighter tones and then for the shadows i'm using purple underneath the boat i'm using first purple and then i'm moving on to very dark blues i have used three different shades of blues for this painting the cerulean blue which i was calling fuchsia before and uh, cobalt blue and prussian blue but if you do not have all these three shades if you have in any two or if you have an indigo you can kind of mix and match and all of those even a thalo blue will work it don't need to worry about it now you can see i'm creating some raindrops um, with white gouache i am uh, there is very little water on my paint brush or brush and a lot of gouache so that it kind of creates these bright white spots and i will put this gouache streaks all over the painting although in most of the areas because it is so light colored almost white it won't show um, from this distance but when you have a close-up look it will kind of show up and it will kind of give you the look uniform look of raindrops and rainwater and uh, that is what you want so keep on making those raindrops that is going to kind of complete the realistic look of water and rain and raindrops and uh, also create some very close to the ground to kind of uh, give you the image of a water splatter uh, as the ripples are created uh, by raindrops on the ground and that pretty much brings us to the end of the painting i hope you enjoyed this simple little painting i hope it uh, made you feel calm made you uh, bring you back some nice memories or give you ideas to create some new memories and uh, obviously uh, enjoyed this watercolor tutorial if you have any thoughts comments questions please share them in the comment section below i always want to know more about your thoughts and do not forget to hit the thumbs up um, if you like the painting and feel free to share it with your friends thank you for watching